Surely you have heard a lot about the natural disasters, strange events that recently occurred at the Kaaba that shocked the whole world. Today we will not stop there, still in the Kaaba, we will still tell you about the incidents but more magnificent, about the magical journeys of the two you may know. Each of them will leave us with different thoughts. Join us, and let's step into the story of Knights of Ascension. The night was dark and silent, except for the gentle breathing of the Prophet Muhammad as he lay in his bed. Suddenly, he felt a touch on his shoulder and opened his eyes. He saw a dazzling figure standing before him, with wings that filled the room with light. It was the angel Jibrael, the messenger of Allah. Muhammad was astonished and humbled by this offer. He quickly got up and followed Jibrael, who took him to a winged steed called Burak. They mounted the Burak and flew through the night sky, faster than the speed of light. They reached Jerusalem, where they prayed at the sacred mosque, Al-Aqsa. There, they met with the other prophets and messengers of Allah, such as Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and others, peace be upon them all. They greeted Muhammad with love and respect, and acknowledged him as the leader and seal of the prophets. Then took Muhammad to a ladder that reached up to the heavens. They climbed the ladder and entered the first heaven. There, they saw countless angels praising and glorifying Allah. They also saw Adam, the father of mankind, who welcomed Muhammad as his son. Jibril knocked on the gate of the first heaven and asked for permission to enter. The gatekeeper asked, Who is it? Jibril answered, It is Jibril. The gatekeeper asked, Who is with you? Jibril answered, It is Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. The gatekeeper said, Has he been sent for? Jibril said, Yes, he has been invited by Allah. The gatekeeper said, Welcome, O messenger of Allah. You are the honored guest of Allah. The gate opened and they entered the first heaven. They repeated the same process for the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth heavens, each time meeting a different prophet, peace be upon them all, who greeted Muhammad with joy and admiration. They also saw different wonders and marvels of Allah's creation, such as the stars, the moon, the sun, and the planets. They also witnessed the angels performing various tasks and duties, such as recording the deeds of humans, guarding the heavens and the earth, and carrying out Allah's commands. Finally, they reached the seventh heaven, where they met Ibrahim, the friend of Allah. He embraced Muhammad and said, You are the most beloved of Allah. You have been chosen to deliver the final message to mankind. You have been blessed with the greatest honor of seeing Allah face to face. The gatekeeper said, Welcome, O messenger of Allah. You are the honored guest of Allah. The gate opened and they entered the seventh heaven. There, they saw a magnificent tree, called the Sidrat ul Muntaha, the lote tree of the farthest limit. It was so huge and beautiful that it covered the whole heaven. Muhammad was filled with awe and gratitude. He said, O Jibrael, I thank Allah for his bounty and favor. I thank him for choosing me as his messenger and for bringing me to this place. I thank him for making me meet the other prophets and messengers, and for showing me the wonders of his creation. I thank him for his mercy and grace. I am ready to see his signs and receive his gifts. I am ready to meet him and speak to him. Jibrail kissed Muhammad on his forehead and left him. Muhammad stood alone under the Sidratul Muntaha, waiting for Allah's call. He felt a surge of love and longing in his heart. He felt a sense of peace and tranquility in his soul. He felt a joy and satisfaction in his mind. He felt a light and warmth in his body. He felt a closeness and intimacy with Allah. Then, he heard a voice, more beautiful than any sound, more sweet than any melody, more clear than any speech. It was the voice of Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the sustainer of all things, the king of all kings, the judge of all judges, the merciful of all merciful, the loving of all loving. It was the voice that he had longed to hear, the voice that he had loved to obey, the voice that he had strived to please, the voice that he had lived to serve. It was the voice that said, Peace be upon you, O Muhammad, my beloved servant and messenger. You have come to me as I have invited you. You have seen my signs as I have shown you. You have heard my words as I have spoken to you. You have loved me as I have loved you. 
Come closer to me, O Muhammad, and I will come closer to you. Come nearer to me, O Muhammad, and I will come nearer to you. Come to me, O Muhammad, and I will come to you. Muhammad felt an irresistible attraction and a powerful pull. He moved forward closer and closer to Allah, until there was nothing between him and Allah, except a veil of light. He reached out his hand and lifted the veil. He saw a sight that no eye had ever seen, no ear had ever heard, no mind had ever imagined, no heart had ever desired. He saw the face of Allah, the most beautiful, the most glorious, the most majestic, the most sublime. He saw the face of Allah, the source of all light, the origin of all grace, the cause of all goodness, the essence of all love. He saw the face of Allah, and he was filled with an indescribable joy and bliss. He saw the face of Allah, and he fell down in prostration and worship. Allah, who is considered the most important of all the angels in Islam, and is referred to as God in the Bible, instructed the angels, O oh angels, do not reveal my image tonight. Let us cease causing trouble for both of us. If he had come, leave him, and let him ascend in worship tonight. This command was a clear indication of the high regard Allah held for Prophet Muhammad. It was a night of honor, a night when the Prophet was to ascend in worship, symbolizing his spiritual elevation. Allah further instructed, Adorn Janat ul Firdaus with garments and jewels, bind a crown on his head. Janat ul Firdaus, often referred to as the highest level of paradise in Islam, was to be decorated in honor of this special occasion. Allah then delivered a message to Hazrat Masal, the angel of missiles, instructing him to separate the measure of risk from the hands of Israfil. Israfil, another angel in Islamic tradition, was told to give peace to the Sur for a while, indicating a period of tranquility and respite. Furthermore, Allah commanded the release of the gates of Janat ul Firdaus and instructed Malik, the guardian of hell, to seal the doors of Jahannam. This act symbolized a temporary cessation of punishment and the opening of the gates of Bakari, purgatory. The occupants were allowed to move freely from the east to the west, symbolizing a temporary liberation. On this special night, those who deserved freedom were released, signifying Allah's mercy and compassion. This event underscores the significance of mercy, forgiveness, and spiritual elevation in Islamic tradition. It serves as a reminder of the divine mercy of Allah and the spiritual journey that every believer is encouraged to undertake. Accompanied by the Lord and a host of 70,000 angels, they ascended to the heavens. The angel Jibril, Gabriel, a key figure in Islamic tradition, was given a divine command to lead this procession. He took a divine vehicle and ascended to Janat, a term referring to the Islamic concept of paradise. This procession was said to be so grand that no king had ever witnessed such a spectacle. It was beyond imagination, and the Prophet was the first to experience this on the night of Isra and Mirage. The atmosphere is clear, with strange conditions in the air. The stars twinkle with the light of Abu Talib, the uncle of Prophet Muhammad and the father of Ali. The entire world is in a state of peace and silence. Nisfahu signifies the passing of half the night, and Yakya symbolizes the opening of the door to the heavenly world. The splendors of Anwar and Tajaliyat are revealed. During this time, Hazrat Jibril carries the Barak, a creature in Islamic tradition said to be a transport for certain prophets, to take the prophet to the heavens. They are thinking that if the voice is heard, it will become extremely intense. It is decided that the bridegroom of the Night of Ascension should be bedecked. At that moment, Allah also says, O Jibril, kiss the feet of my beloved Muhammad, so that the coolness of your lips opens the eyes of my beloved. On this day, Allah created Jibril from the disbeliever. Upon hearing this, Jibril and Islam advanced, and with their cold lips, they touched the blessed feet of the beloved Prophet. This scene must have been so beautiful, that when Jibril kissed the heart of Hazrat Ibrahim, the coolness of his lips reached the Prophet in Bader. Feeling the coolness on his lips, Prophet Muhammad woke up and sat up, and at that moment, the entire universe was present before him. Then Jibril checked his chest, washed it with the water of Zamzam, a well located within the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, placed it in his chest, and closed the chest. Hazrat Jibril says, Tonight, 
Every part of your body has been washed with the water of Zamzam. After that, the Prophet was brought a container of gold, filled with Iman and Hikmat. After his heart was washed, it was filled with Iman and Hikmat. Then, his heart was washed again, and it was filled with Iman and Hikmat, meaning it overflowed with faith and wisdom. This heart was then placed in his sacred chest and sealed. In Sahih Bukhari, in the chapter of Jinn, Hadith number 568, it is mentioned that after the chest was checked, a golden bowl filled with the water of Zamzam was brought. Hazrat Jibril washed the heart with the water of Zamzam and placed it back in its place, and then closed the chest. Hazrat Jibril said, Tomorrow, all the skies will be covered with curtains. Mushtaqid, enthusiastically, is standing with his hands raised from the earth to the heavens on all the elders. This passion of mine is recorded. Indeed, you are the Imam of all the Anwar, lights. Specifically, in the chapter of Jinn, Hadith number 568, it is mentioned that following the inspection of the Prophet's chest, a golden bowl filled with the water of Zamzam was brought forth. The water of Zamzam, originating from the well within the precincts of the Kaaba in Mecca, is considered sacred in Islam. After that, once purified, the Prophet's heart was gently returned to its rightful place within his chest, which was then securely sealed. This act of purification was not merely physical, but deeply spiritual, symbolizing the Prophet's purity of heart and soul, a requisite for his forthcoming celestial journey. At this moment, Hazrat Jibril made a profound declaration. Hazrat Jibril, who is considered the Archangel acting as an intermediary between God and humans and the bearer of revelation to the Prophets, announced that the preparations for the Prophet's journey had commenced. This journey was not an ordinary one. It was a spiritual voyage that would transcend the earthly realm, reaching into the heavens. In the collection of hadith compiled by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, known as Musnad Ahmad, it is documented that a golden bowl brimming with Zamzam water was presented following the examination of the Prophet's chest. With this water, Hazrat Jibreel performed a second cleansing of the Prophet's heart before returning it to its place and sealing the chest once again. Hazrat Jibreel then made a prophetic declaration, Tomorrow all the heavens will be covered with curtains. This statement held profound implications, suggesting a divine plan was set to unfold, a plan that would involve the heavens themselves. In anticipation of this blessed event, I stand with my hands raised high, my spirit fervently drawn from the confines of the earth towards the boundless heavens. I await the arrival of Hazrat Jibreel, yearning for the blessed meeting with the Prophet. This meeting is not merely an encounter, it is a communion of spiritual beings, a testament to the unity and harmony that exists between heaven and earth. During this journey they came across a distinctive red hill. The celestial steed Barak, a creature in Islamic tradition said to have transported the Prophet Muhammad to heaven, began to dance in an otherworldly manner. The ground and its surroundings were not ordinary, they were divine creations of Allah, the Arabic name for God. This place was adorned by angels, heavenly beings mentioned in both the Bible and the Quran, and crafted by Jinn 5, supernatural creatures made of smokeless fire according to Islamic belief. On this hill was inscribed the testimony of faith, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, which translates to there is no deity but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. This phrase is a fundamental declaration of faith in Islam, similar to the Christian belief in the Holy Trinity. As they continued their journey, they encountered another red hill. Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa identified this hill as the resting place of Musa, a prophet revered in both Christianity and Islam. Moses, who is known for leading the Israelites out of Egypt according to the Bible, was standing and praying at his grave. At this point, Hazrat Jibril, an archangel who plays significant roles in both Christianity and Islam, advised Hazrat Muhammad to perform two units of voluntary prayer. After offering the prayer, their journey continued towards Bayt al-Muqaddas, where a grand assembly of all the prophets awaited the arrival of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa. Upon reaching there, a staggering 80,000 angels were present on the right side of the prophet, and another 80,000 were on the left side, the atmosphere was filled with divine greetings and salutations, and the name of the Prophet echoed from the sacred precincts of Madinah to the exalted Masjid al-Aqsa. 
This procession of angels and the prophet then continued their ascent towards the heavens, further symbolizing the spiritual journey towards divine enlightenment. During this extraordinary voyage, the prophet was granted glimpses into the sacred resting places of revered prophets, including the luminous souls of Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Musa. The ethereal radiance emanating from Burak's hooves, accompanied by the swift movements resembling lightning, accentuated the majestic nature of this celestial journey. As the radiance of prophethood enveloped Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, he ascended to Masjid Al-Aqsa. The celestial journey from the sacred sanctuary to the heavens was adorned with a cascade of light upon light, transforming the sky into an ethereal tapestry. The stars themselves, in a state of serene reverence, saluted in unison to the Prophet's ascent. Hazrat Jibril, with angelic grace, intoned the call to prayer, a celestial melody that echoed through the heavens. In the sacred expanse of Beitul Muqaddas, a tableau of divine grandeur unfolded, creating a spectacle that transcended the bounds of time and space. The air resonated with the melodious echoes of salutations, a harmonious prelude to the imminent call to prayer. At the forefront of this celestial congregation stood Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, a beacon of dignity and grace that commanded the attention of angels and honored prophets alike. The sacred precincts of Baitul Muqaddas bore witness to an unparalleled moment of spiritual significance. As the Prophet, with regal poise, led the congregation in two units of voluntary prayer, the Prophets and Messengers expressed their gratitude in complete submission. Heads bowed in reverence, angels and noble Prophets awaited the signal, eager to manifest their unwavering loyalty. This charming scene, enveloped in a soul-stirring atmosphere, surpassed the grandeur of mountains and deserts, etching an indelible mark on the canvas of divine narratives. The journey continued, weaving through landscapes adorned with regality and beauty. Hazrat Jibrael declared the boundary of the beloved, ushering the procession from lofty mountains to expansive plains. In response to their request, Allah, the most blessed and exalted, commanded all angels to assemble at Sidrat ul Muntaha. The procession of the beloved unfolded, a celestial parade of devotion and reverence. Angels performed acts of worship, creating an ethereal symphony that echoed through the divine realms. This narrative, steeped in spiritual significance, draws parallels with the ascension of Jesus into heaven, where both prophets transcend earthly boundaries, converging in the luminous tapestry of divine narratives that transcend faith traditions. Now let us compare it to the ascension of Jesus into heaven, as recorded in the Bible. According to the New Testament, Jesus Christ was the Son of Mary, peace be upon her, and the Messiah, the Anointed One, sent by God to the people of Israel. He performed many miracles and taught many parables, calling people to repentance and faith. He was opposed by the Jewish authorities and the Roman rulers, who conspired to arrest him and crucify him. He was betrayed by one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, and handed over to his enemies. He was tortured and mocked and nailed to a cross, where he died. He was buried in a tomb, which was sealed and guarded. But on the third day, he rose from the dead by the power of God and appeared to his disciples and followers, proving to them that he was alive. He stayed with them for 40 days, teaching them and instructing them. He also promised them that he would send them the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who would guide them and empower them. He also told them that he would come back again to judge the living and the dead and to establish his kingdom. Then. He led them to a place near Bethany, a village on the Mount of Olives. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. A cloud hid him from their sight. They looked up and saw two men in white standing beside them. They said to them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the story of the ascension of Jesus to heaven and to the right hand of God. The two stories have some similarities and some differences. Both stories describe the departure of a prophet and messenger of God from the earth to the heaven, after completing his mission and delivering his message. Both stories show the reverence and respect that the prophet and messenger received from the heavenly beings and the earthly followers. 
Both stories indicate the exaltation and honor that the prophet and messenger attained in the sight of God. Both stories imply the continuation and completion of the prophet and messenger's work through the sending of another helper and guide. For Muhammad it was the Holy Spirit, also known as Jibrail, who brought down the revelation of the Quran and inspired the believers. For Jesus it was the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter, who filled the disciples and empowered them to preach the gospel and perform miracles. However, the two stories also have some differences. The ascension of Muhammad was a one-time event that happened during his lifetime, while he was still alive and active. He returned to the earth after seeing Allah and continued his mission until his death. The ascension of Jesus was a final event that happened after his death and resurrection. He did not return to the earth after ascending to heaven, but remained there until his second coming. Another difference is that the ascension of Muhammad was a private and secret event that only he witnessed and experienced. He did not take anyone with him, nor did anyone see him go or come back. He only shared his story with his close companions and followers, who believed him and supported him. The ascension of Jesus was a public and visible event that many people witnessed and experienced. He took his disciples with him, and they saw him go and heard him speak. He also appeared to many others after his resurrection, who testified to his life and power. A third difference is that the ascension of Muhammad was a journey and a meeting that involved multiple stages and encounters. He traveled through the seven heavens, met with various prophets and messengers, and saw different signs and wonders. He also spoke to Allah and received his gifts and commands. The ascension of Jesus was a departure and a return that involved a single action and destination. He rose up from the earth, went to heaven, and sat at the right hand of God. He did not meet with anyone or see anything on his way. He also did not speak to God or receive anything from him. Hey. These are some of the lessons and meanings that we can learn from the ascension of Muhammad and Jesus, peace be upon them both. We ask God to bless them and their families and companions, and to make us among their followers and lovers. We ask God to guide us to the truth and to the right path. We ask God to forgive us our sins and to grant us His mercy and grace. We ask God to make us among those who praise Him and whom He praises. We ask God to make us among those who love Him and whom He loves. We ask God to make us among those who are close to Him and whom He is close to. We ask God to make us among those who are successful in this world and in the hereafter. We ask God to make us among those who are pleased with Him and whom He is pleased with. We ask God to make us among those who are blessed by Him and whom He bless. Amen. Amen. Amen.